We begin now with Lecture 2, Zeno's Paradox in the Geometric Series. The title of this talk is going to be Catch Me If You Can, Understanding Zeno's Paradox. Zeno of Alea was a Greek philosopher, and he was probably the first person to try to deal with the concept of infinity. He created a set of paradoxes which showed very odd things like motion is impossible and an unfair race always is won by the racer who starts with a head start. Common sense tells us that these paradoxes are completely false, but the flaws and the arguments are subtle and they deal with issues related to infinity and we need to really understand those. Our goal is to understand these paradoxes and use similar reasoning to show some remarkable results about how we can sum series and in some of essence tame the infinite. The title Catch Me If You Can refers to a older movie, older certainly than all of you, with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks about a person who posed as an airline pilot and stole lots of money from many, many different people, and Tom Hanks is the agent who's trying to catch him. We're going to analyze one of the paradoxes of Zeno called Achilles and the Tortoise, and it's the paradox of an unfair race. Achilles gives the tortoise a lead, and the question is, can he ever catch him? So here's a graphic that illustrates the paradox. We start off with Achilles on the left-hand side, giving the tortoise a sizable lead. And that initial separation is indicated for you in red. And then if we wait for some period of time, as Achilles is trying to reach the tortoise, he has to reach the point that is halfway between where he currently is and where the tortoise will be when he reaches that halfway point. Then he has to keep repeating this. And each time, as he gets closer, that distance shrinks, but he always has more distance to go. And this series is going to continue for an infinite number of steps. So because it continues for an infinite number of steps, he's never going to get there. So he can never pass the tortoise because he'll never actually reach the tortoise. And now here's the interesting thing. What Zeno said was any perception we have of him actually reaching the tortoise is a problem with our senses, which cannot be trusted. Okay, so what's wrong with this argument? What we have to do is we have to treat the spatial motion and the time separately and analyze both of them. So suppose Achilles and the tortoise each move with constant velocity. Then the time it takes for Achilles to move through each halfway point is going to shrink by a factor of 2 for each step. And that means the total time is going to be represented by a series that we call the geometric series. And it's given by the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. So that would be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth and so forth. And it turns out that the geometric series can be exactly summed. And the answer is 1 over 1 minus a half. And that equals 2. Now if you think about this for a moment, this is exactly what it should be. If in the first time interval he goes half the distance, the time interval it's going to take for him to go the other half of the distance is exactly the same as the first time interval because they're all moving at constant speed. And so the total time should be twice the time it takes to go that first half distance. And that's indeed what the geometric series tells you. So how do we get this mathematical result? The error that we had in the argument was that the infinite number of steps actually only takes a finite amount of time. It doesn't take an infinite amount of time. So Achilles can easily catch the tortoise and then pass it. Okay, so the key to this argument was the ability to sum the geometric series. So how do we do this mathematical argument? So let's take a look at what the geometric series is. It's 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 7th plus x to the 8th, and so on, all the way out to infinity. And we write it in this graphical form, the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. This, of course, looks quite intimidating, so let's look at a concrete example. Let's pick x equals 0 0.1. Then what we have is 1 
plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 squared plus 0 0.1 cubed, and so on, we can evaluate each of those terms. It's 1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.001, and so on. And I can very easily, just by looking at that, sum the whole thing. It's 1.111111 with all those ones repeating all the way out to infinity. Now, let's go back to probably it was fifth grade, maybe even fourth grade, where you were working with fractions and you figured out how to convert that infinite decimal into a fraction. The answer is that it can be converted into 1 plus 1 ninth or 10 ninths. Okay, good. We figured out how to sum an explicit example of the geometric series. How do we do it for the general case? All right, let's look and see how this will be done. So first what we're going to do is we're going to suppose the sum goes to some large integer n instead of infinity. And so we're going to call that sum of n, and it's going to be 1 plus x plus x squared all the way up to x to the n. Now here comes the trick for how we solve this problem. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply the sum by 1 minus x. We have to do that multiplication on both sides. Of course, on the left-hand side, it does nothing. It just sits there. But on the right-hand side, I now have two terms. Let me distribute the 1 minus x over the rest of the terms. So 1 times that series is going to just give the series again. But minus x is going to give me a minus x minus x squared all the way out to minus x to the n plus 1. Now let's look carefully at this series. You can see there's an x and a minus x. There's an x squared and a minus x squared. There's an x cubed and a minus x cubed. All of those guys are going to cancel. x with x, x squared with minus x squared, x cubed with minus x cubed, x to the fourth with minus x to the fourth, all the way out to x to the n with minus x to the n. And what I find is I'm left with a 1 and a minus x to the n plus 1. Okay, let's now look at the left-hand side. There's a 1 minus x there, so I have to divide by the 1 minus x to determine what the sum is. And so what we find is the sum is equal to 1 minus x raised to the n plus 1 power divided by 1 minus x. Okay, that's a nice formula. It works for any n, and the n we're expecting to be a large integer, and eventually we want to take the limit where that n goes to infinity. All right, but let's do a sanity check. Let's go back to our x equals 0 0.1, and let's look at a couple of numbers of terms. So if n is equal to 0, then x to the n plus 1 is equal just to x, and I get 1 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.9, divided by 1 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.9, and I get 1. And indeed, if the sum is just equal to 1, because that was the first term of the geometric series. If I look at n equals 1, the sum should equal 1.1, and now let's look at our formula. x is 0.1, and n is 1, so I have to evaluate x squared, which is 0 0.01. I get 0 0.99 in the numerator, and I get a 0 0.9 in the denominator, and indeed, I get 1.1 when I look at that ratio. And similarly, when I look at the case n equals 2, the sum is now equal to 1.11, and I can go through the algebra and find that indeed this formula continues to work. And so it looks like this formula is working completely fine for all these different cases. And now the question is, what happens to the second term in the numerator, the x to the n plus 1 term, when n gets very large? Well, if x is less than 1, then x to the n will become very small. So think about 0 0.1. If I take 0 0.1 and raise it to the thousandth power, I've got a thousand zeros before I have a 1. That's a very small number. And as n gets bigger and bigger, the number just keeps getting smaller and smaller. So if I take the limit where n goes to infinity, I can replace x to the n by 0 under the condition that x is less than 1. Notice that if x was bigger than 1, this is complete garbage. It only works in the case where x is less than 1. And when I say x less than 1, I really mean the absolute value of x being less than 1. And then what we're going to find for the result for the geometric series is simply that the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n equals now 1 for the numerator, because the x to the n plus 1 got replaced by 0, divided by 1 minus x. All right, once again, we have a formula like this. We need a sanity check. Let's check it for x equals 0 0.1. And what we find in that case, we already worked it out, is that we get 1.111 repeating. 
Let's compare that with 1 over 1 minus x. That becomes 1 over 1 minus 0 0.1, or 1 over 0 0.9, or I can write that as 10 ninths. And indeed, that is exactly what we said the result was for this calculation. So it works.